Department of Orthopedic and Traumatology FKUI RSCM presents Jane Cell Tumor. We will talk a brief about the introduction until the prognosis of Jane Cell Tumor. Jane Cell Tumor is potentially malignant and sometimes strongly malignant neoplasm that arises in the cancerous end of long bones in young adults. The origin of neoplasm cells is unknown. The neoplasm develops in the region of former epiphysis of long bone after the epiphyseal plate has closed, thus it is rare before the age of 20. The most common sites include the lower end of radius, the upper end of tibia, lower end of femur, and upper end of humerus. The neoplasm usually extends to the articular cartilage. Gen cell tumor is locally destructive tumor, in which two-thirds of the lesion is benign and one-third of the lesion becomes frankly malignant. Cancellous and cortical bones are resorbed from the inside and the periosteum deposits bone on the outside. End of the bone eventually becomes expanded. There can be area of hemorrhage. This phenomenon is comparable to the aneurysm bone cheese that will expand at an alarming rate. The metastasis in gen cell tumor can develop late. The microscopic appearance of the gen cell tumors are vascular network of stromal cells and large number of multinucleated gen cells. The gen cells in gen cells tumors are osteoclasts originating from hematopoietic stem cells. The cells are stimulated by the soluble receptor activator for nuclear factor kappa B that will interact with rung ligand expressed on monocyte lineage and osteoclast precursors. This will induce osteoclast differentiation and so osteolysis. The clinical manifestation includes pain and disturbance of joint motion. The radiographic features of gen cell tumors include the eccentric expansile lobulated lytic lesion or expanding zone of radiolucency with a narrow zone of transition. It is usually occurred at the end of long bone with eventual expansion of the bone. Gen cell tumors usually have little or no discernible matrix calcification and little newborn formation or periosteal reaction. The lesion may be well marginated or poorly marginated. Some gen cell tumors produce large areas of destruction with poor margination, suggesting the diagnosis of malignancy. The lesion may destroy the articular cartilage and extend into the joint. It is unusual to see sclerosis around a benign giant cell tumor. This is the example of radiographic findings in giant cell tumor. We can see the expanding zone of radiolucency with another zone of transition in the end of a long bone with eventual expansion of the bone. The other imaging modalities of giant cell tumor include CT scan and MRI. The CT scans will give an accurate estimation of cortical bone involvement, while MRI is the optimum technique for evaluation of recurrent or residual disease. MRI will demonstrate low signal on T1 and intermediate to high signal on T2 with areas of heterogeneity. This is the example of CT scan finding in gen cell tumor. And this is the example of MRI finding in gen cell tumor. The gross pathologic feature of gen cell tumor 
is that the tumor tissue is characteristically soft, friable, and dark brown in color. The tumor practically always extends to the articular cartilage. Its boundaries are only moderately well demarcated from adjacent bone and cartilage, and even with very large lesion, the periosteum is rarely breached. The histopathologic findings in gen cell tumors are the presence of large number of osteoclast-like giant cells among scattered round or spindle-shaped mononuclear cells, and the tumor stroma is often vascularized and might contain bands of cellular or collagenous fibrous tissue. Core needle biopsy or intraoperative frozen section is the recommended technique to establish final diagnosis. The gen cell tumor is classified according to Campanacci classification. In stage 1, the lesion is completely intraosseous. In stage 2, the lesion is cortical erosion without destruction, while in stage 3, there is cortical destruction with a soft tissue component. The principle of the treatment of gen cell tumor is the consideration that the gen cell tumor has tendency to recur after local surgical treatment such as simple cartilage. Therefore, the surgery should be as aggressive as necessary to remove all neoplastic tissue without being so extensive that it disturbs function of the limb unnecessarily. The treatment of stage 1 Gen cell tumor is extended intralational cartilage with a detailed depredement of the lesional wall and adjacent treatment. The treatment for stage 2 gen cell tumor is extended intralational cartilage with a detailed depredement of the lesional wall and adjacent treatment. The treatment for stage 3 gen cell tumor is to row cartilage such as end block resection and denosumab. And the treatment for lesion in inoperable location is the denosumab. The choices of local adjuvant treatments are phenol, liquid nitrogen, or PMMA. The removal of the tumor by curatage is the most widely accepted therapy. The chemical or thermal cautery of the walls of the cavity is advocated and the defect is ordinarily filled with bone chips. Total excision of the tumor and its surrounding shell of bone and periosteum is sometimes the treatment of choice, especially when a small bone, such as the fibula or radius, is involved. The amputation may be necessary for extensive destructive lesions. When malignant change occurs, the treatment is the same as indicated for radioresistant sarcoma. Local recurrence after curatage is the indication for radical excision and limb sparing procedure with replacement of the resected part using PMMA or autogenous bone graft or endoprosthesis. This is the principle of surgical treatment of gen cell tumor which includes curatage and local adjuvant treatment. During curatage, oval window is made in the cortex creating sufficient exposure of the tumor cavity. Gen cell tumor is then carefully curated with curates of different sizes followed by high-speed burring of cavity walls. Then local adjuvant treatment is applied. For local adjuvant treatment, if we use phenol, Cavity walls are phenolized with protection of surroundings of tissue, followed by rinsing with alcohol and neutralizing with repeated or high-speed pulse lava. This is repeated two to three times. If we use liquid nitrogen or cryosurgery, we can use liquid nitrogen spray. The next step is to fill the cavity form after the curatage. Several options exist for filling the cavity which can be left empty awaiting new bone formation during partial immobilization or may be filled with cancellous bone graft or PMMA. The most commonly used technique is filling with PMMA. 
giant cells express receptor activator of nuclear factor capable ligand, and denosumab is a rank ligand inhibitor. This is the treatment algorithm of the giant cell tumor. The prognosis of giant cell tumor is that the long-term follow-up is essential in assessing the results of therapy for giant cell tumor because malignant change has been known to occur. Secondary malignant change is usually to pure fibrosarcoma or osteosarcoma. A benign giant cell tumor can metastasize to the lungs. This is the further reading. Thank you for your kind attention.